house is not particularly long at 160 kilometers, but the climbs are there for us all to see. A couple of small foothills to start with, the Col du Marais and the Col de Lépine, and then they go on to the Côte de Herri, and then the first big climb is the Col de Saisy, followed by the hill up to the finish at La Plagne. And now on the first serious climb of this year's Tour de France, the Col des Saisy, coming at 73 kilometers covered. The expected attacks have come from Anse, with no sign of Bjorn Ries in the forward group. It is in fact the Kelme rider coming up the climb on his own, Federico Munoz. And as they go over the top, second is Alex Zula. Third is Bo Hamburger. They were seven seconds back. Richard Varenk coming up just over one minute back. The field all splitting up here on the approach to the summit. Laurent Dufault, Miranda, Indurain going over the top of the climb in seventh place, uh, just ahead of Lance Armstrong and his teammate Aparicio. Gerard Rue over there in tenth place and Mariana Rojas there as well. So the the threat, the attack from Bjorn Ries has not yet materialized. He is in the group because on the descent, three riders remaining clear. Munoz, Zula and Hamburger. Armstrong in pursuit and the field generally regrouping behind him. And it seems the Bonesto team for the moment have got this race under control. And partway up now, the Cormier de Rosland, and there's a sensation on the climb because Evgeny Berzin of the Gavis team has been left behind by this bunch of some 30 men. The tremendous pace being set by Alex Zula. He'd started the climb in the company of two other riders, Munoz of the Kelme team and Bo Hamburg of TVM, with Lance Armstrong chasing. Armstrong never made it, and in fact, this man has blown the other two away. He now leads by three minutes and 35 seconds ahead of the main field, and Indurain is trying to limit his losses here. This has been a tremendous attack by Onse, and today Alex Zula really has found his wings. He really has. This is a superb move by Alex Zula, but the whole team are riding well today. They're at the front of the field. They've still got Johan Brunel in contact. They've still got Laurent Jalabert. They've got Melchior Maori still there. It is a superb tactical move by this team, which is what they must do if they want to try and put Miguel Indurain into pressure. Because man against man, I don't think anybody can beat Miguel Indurain. But five against one, then I think they may stand a chance. As regards the Gateway's team, it really does uh, seem now as though it will have to settle for a new leader in Bjorn Aris. At the start this morning, Gateway's accepted that they had two leaders of the team and their manager, Emmanuel Bombini, decided to give Aris three riders to work for him, Colombo, Gotti and Bontempi. The other four riders on the team were going to have to work for Berzin. Now, Bombini wouldn't say what would happen if Reese attacked, and indeed, would Berzin counter that move? But well, it's academic now, because here at the front, or just in this group here, in this league group, is Bjarne Reese, while Berzin has been dropped and is being nursed at the moment by Bruno Kengialta. So Reese is coming through quite clearly now as the strongest man on the Gavis team. Now approaching the summit of the Cormier de Rosalande, Alex Zula has continued to gain time over a field which is desperately trying to contain him. He comes up to the summit here, an average day 34 kilometers an hour. This is a tremendous piece of cycling by Alex Zula and has really put Miguel Indurain and his teammates on the defensive. He now oh, begins the long descent and then along the valley before he'll start the climb uh, up towards the finish at La Plagne. And there is Miguel Indurain. He doesn't certainly look to be any in any trouble at all here. Uh, but all the way up the climb, Azula has continued to gain time. The last check we had was four minutes. There will be another time check running on top of the hill. But also in this group, we've got the other big climbers. Pantani is here. Uh, Claudio Chiapucci, uh, Bjorn Aris, uh, Zenon Yaskula, Alvaro Mejia and Pellicioli, the king of the mountain to the Tour of Italy last year. They are still in this group and perhaps all waiting to pounce in Durain when they start the last climb to La Pan Plania. Well, everybody's there and they've all said that they will attack Miguel Indurain and that is the only place to do it on the final climb. 18 kilometres is the, the distance from the bottom of the, the mountain here to the summit and that would be a great launch pad for somebody like Marco Pantani. But don't forget, he's over 10 minutes behind Miguel Indurain already in the overall standings. A long way down now for Alex Zula. And still coming up the other side, still the clock ticking for the group Indurain. 
And into our cameras now, Bo Hamburger dropped by Alex Zula on the lower slopes of the climb. And look at the clock, Paul. And this is to Hamburger, which means that Zula is over five minutes ahead of the main field here. Hamburger is going backwards, and he goes under the banner, 4.53 down. Well, that is incredible at the moment. That would mean that there's the main group coming up behind. They are pushing it up. Richard Viren goes over in third place to get maximum points there that he can get from the, the group. Dufo was next, and then Miguel Indurain. So at the moment, Alex Zula is in the yellow jersey. So Alex Zula is the virtual leader of the Tour de France on the road today. He has taken back all the time he has lost. The Anse team have attacked Miguel Indurain ever since this stage began. This is a most unusual Tour de France, but for us, it's a really great one. And just look at this, Evgeny Berzin is six minutes and 46 seconds down on Zula, and so he's almost three minutes behind the Indurain bunch as well. He is in desperate trouble. And so as Berzin goes over the summit, and this man now is the virtual leader of the Tour de France, we'll take a break. There'll be a new winner at La Plagne today, because the Tour's only been here twice, and Laurent Fignon won both times. The first time in 84, he went on to win the whole thing. The real drama, though, came the second time around in 1987. That story, coming up after the break. Two tools, star four. <laughs> Everybody knows this. <laughs> OK, that's the finish of it. Go away. <laughs> When Laurent Fignon won the inaugural stage to La Plagne in 1984, he was on the way to claiming his second consecutive Tour de France. But when he repeated the trick three years later, the real story was unfolding behind him. Pedro Delgado was in yellow and thought he'd finally seen off the challenge of Stephen Roach, who'd been left for dead on the climb. But as Delgado neared the finish, he suddenly had company. And just who is that rider coming up behind? Because that looks like Roach. That looks like Stephen Roach. It's Steven Roach who's come over the line. He almost caught Pedro Delgado, I don't believe it. Roach looked spent on the line but recovered to take the tour. And if Lepanya wasn't the stage that won it for him, it was certainly the stage where he saved himself from losing it. And Stephen Roach was back in action last night for a rest day charity race in the Grand Bournon. They have what must have been one of the strongest fields of all time, including the winners of 16 tours. Among the greats pulling in their stomachs and putting on the old gear, or most of it anyway, were Raymond Poulidor, Bernard Eno, Joop Zottemelk, and the biggest name of the lot, Eddie Merckx. Each veteran led a team comprising a celebrity, a sponsor and a local youngster in a time trial to raise money for disabled children's bikes. And just like the old days, many of the riders were carrying their own spares. Lucien Aymar, the 1966 winner, needed a bit of charity himself to get going. Mostly, though, it was the old-timers who were helping their teammates around. Although after some fancy bike handling, Bernard Tevenet eventually had to give up on one of his stragglers. The last team off was that of Eddie Merckx, much to the amusement of his peers. And if the cannibal was carrying a few excess pans at the start, that was nothing to the extra 17 stone he had to push up the final climb. It paid off, though. Merckx won, just like he always used to. And just before we go back to the racing, there's an interesting footnote to that 1987 stage finish here at La Plagne, because all three of the main participants in it, Laurent Fignon, Pedro Delgado and Stephen Roach, are here today commentating for television. Somehow, though, I don't think Stephen will have reminded Pedro about it. Back to the race then now with Phil and Paul. Thanks, Gary. And you know, La Plagne is now set to offer another desperate finish here today because Alex Zula, who had a gain of 5 minutes and 20 seconds, we are now at 4 minutes and 25 seconds. So Zula is going to have to hang on. This is the rider who is chasing him, Pavel Tonkov for the Lamprey team. He broke clear as soon as the climb began. Now, the riders are on the climb up to the finish, but when they were coming down the Cormet de Rosaland, the main field, led by Indrain in yellow, were very lucky to escape an accident because one of the television motorbikes didn't make a hairpin bend, a down went the bike, and the riders were very lucky to get through on the inside. Now, I have to say, you know, that we often forget that when we watch these pictures on television, the pilots of the motorbikes and the cameramen are every bit as brave as the riders on these descents, and I'm happy to report that no one at all was injured.
Rhys now has taken closer order to Miguel Indurain. He's come right up onto his back wheel, and surely he's done enough now to prove to the Gay Viz team that there is only one leader, and it is the Danish champion. He's right there now. And this is the damage that's been done at the back of that group. You see there is Bruno Tibu, and it looks very much as if Maori is going out of the back as well there. Looks across at this, in fact, is Rojas, who's been suffering. Maori must have managed to stay in contract. Jaskula is just in front of them, so a lot of riders being shelled out here. But still we have Aparicio setting the pace. Indurain thinking it's not good enough and gone round him. And also going around the side of him is Laurent Dufault. And Bjorn Rees, Bjorn Rees is now actually beginning to follow Indurain. Remember, there's only 23 seconds difference. And if he senses Indurain is cooked, he'll take him before the finish. Here is Alex Zula. He seemed to be giving up and losing ground. He waves his team card away. He wants to get on with the concentration. I think the news has come there from his team manager that when he was uh, thought he was losing ground, he's been told now he's gaining it again. The lead is up. Four minutes, 50 seconds, the gap. And Alex Zula is turning in a sensational ride today. And here, in fact, Areparicio is being dropped from the main group, meaning that Miguel Indurain is totally alone, and he's put the pressure on. In fact, everybody is starting to look for gap they're breathing for air and they can't follow the speed of Miguel Indurain at the moment. Indurain is causing a lot of trouble here and I think you know slipping away from our picture has gone the Danish champion. I think Rees suddenly hit the wall and just dropped to the back of the group. He's gone from here. Well he decided now I'm alone I've got to give my own time trial. Zule's had enough time at the front and he really has put the pressure on. He's going to ride his time trial now. Gotti has moved up to his wheel and it may well be that Gotti is going to be the leader of the game of his team because there you can see just at the back of that group, Barney Reese is in fact, he has cracked and so has the green jersey of Laurent Jalabert. He has disappeared from this group as well. Well, Indurain had got the message that, in fact, Zula had accelerated and was increasing his lead, and he thought enough is enough, and he's going it alone. What a man. In fact, Tony Rominger is now at the back of the group, suffering, gasping for air. Indurain has decided, now I'm going to do it. You've played with me all day. Now I'll show you who is the real champion of this Tour de France, and this is an absolutely superb effort. He really is putting the hammer down. Here's Pavel Tonkov, and look at this, Indurain has got him. He's wiped him out in no time at all. Indurain has come up to Pavel Tonkov, which now leaves just Alex Zula up front. Tonkov is in more than a little bit of trouble now, and he's going to find that a tornado is about to come through. And he will have a hard time, the speed that Miguel Indurain is going at the moment. If he can just survive and stay on the wheel of Miguel Indurain, it may well be that Pavel Tonkov is going to climb into a very high place in the overall standings today. The chasing group of three riders here, you can see the balding head of Marco Pantani, so his knee obviously not giving him trouble. And the Italian climber Ivan Gotti from the Gavis squad is there as well, but the terrible um, pace of Miguel Indurain has brought him straight up to Pavel Tonkov. The attack by Zula has done one thing, it has brought to our screens the best out of this man, Miguel Indurain. He has had to produce an unbelievable fight back to come after Alex Zula. And to do it, he's blown everybody away, including number 41, Tony Rominger, who is now in all sorts of trouble here and just wants the climb of La Plania to come to an end. Well, Miguel Indurain really has played a superb tactical game in this year's Tour de France. You know, nobody would have expected that move the day before a time trial. He went out and slammed them once. He came back and won the time trial. But very often, the day after a rest day, it's so difficult. And the riders use that first day in the mountains to get their legs. It's the day that Miguel Indurain has used to actually destroy everyone. And Tony Rominger, quite happy to accept a drink off off uh, Claudio Chiapucci here. These riders now are on a survival course as they wait for the summit of La Plana and it's not too far now for Alex Zula. The crowd are, are getting thicker now. That will inspire Alex a little bit more and they know exactly what has been going on on the other mountains around the Alps today because they listen on the radios and they know that this has been a great exploit by Alex Zula. He's still got three minutes and nine seconds of his lead. Surely that will be enough for him to try and conserve for the victory as he goes under the five kilometres to go, Banner. Just three miles to the summit of La Plana, and that is going to seem an awful long way because this man is still going well. His rhythm is all there. Here is a man now firing on all cylinders. He's feeling insulted that anybody dare attack him and his leader's yellow jersey. Here is Pantoni, a welcome shower. 
Gotti just behind him. Gotti will not help, I don't think, because he will hope that uh, Bjorn Rees has little inspiration and uh, comes back a little bit later on, but I can't see that happening now. A thousand metres separating the winner of the Tour de France, but I've asked uh, four years, and Alex Zula, who for a while today had visions of pulling on the race leader's yellow jersey tonight, with this great man, Miguel Indurain, can always put matters to rights, just give him time. Indurain looking extremely collected at the moment, concentrated on the job at hand, he's riding exceptionally well still, he keeps his pedal rhythms up high, he turns that gear nice and fluidly, he still has three minutes to build up and catch back to Alex Zula. Zula riding superbly at the front. He's obviously digging deep now, trying to get every last little bit out of himself. This, in fact, is Lanfranca from the Brescialette squad. He can't stay in contact with Marco Pantani, and Pantani will be just a little bit further up the road there, and there, in fact, he is still with Ivan Gotti. And now Alex Zula is arriving around uh, the lower slopes of the... Ski station here at La Plagne, his lead at 2 minutes 40 seconds. There's a big crowd here. Jean-Francois Pecheur just trying to work out what's going on. And the answer is that Miguel Indurain, uh, Jean-Francois, is getting closer and closer to Alex Zula. The two climbers here, Pantani at the front and Ivan Gotti at the back, trying very much to keep in contact, but they really can't. Still, it's only one kilometre that separates them. Azula goes under the two-kilometre banner. Miguel Indurain went under the three-kilometre banner. There is one kilometre between them on the road. There's the Basque flag being waved in front of Miguel Indurain. He's flying along, the man from Navarre at the moment. You know, he really has kept exactly the same tempo all the way up this climb, and it was a tempo that nobody else could follow. Tony Rominger tried for a while, Richard Virenk tried, but once this man from Navarre put the hammer down, they were left trailing in his wake, and you know, it's not very far to go now. Alex Zula is going to take, I believe, a fantastic stage victory and at the same time move into second place in the overall standings. One kilometre to go is all he has to do. He's done the ride of his life today. He really has bounced back from his bad performance in the time trial. And you see, he's fighting with his bike now. There's not a great deal of energy left in that body of Alex Zula. Well, I'm not surprised. Alex Zula now in the last kilometre of today's stage of the Tour de France. And what a marvellous stage it has been thanks to this rider here. He went out on the attack. And at one stage, he was the leader of the Tour on the road. He had recovered all of his deficits. And it has taken a solitary move by Miguel Indurain to bring this race back to order. Miguel Indurain has done a superb job today. You know, I thought he was suffering. I thought he was going to have a hard time with all those climbers. But the power of this man when we've come to the mountains really has blown everybody away. This has been a superb ride by Alex Zula. The man who has never won a stage of the Tour de France and on his birthday in his first tour a few years ago now, he took the race lead, but not for long. Now he's getting his first stage win and will remain very much a challenger in this year's race. The Once team came out to attack today. They attacked from the start and they finished with the stage winner. You can't do any more than that. Zula coming up to the line in four hours, 41 minutes and about 17 seconds. Alex Zula gets the stage as the camera quickly goes down now to pick up the yellow jersey of the Tour de France, and that's what he will remain. Just down there on the finish line, I caught a glimpse of Miguel Indurain's manager there, Francis Lafargue. He's got a smile about a mile wide as he's waiting for Miguel to come up to the line here, 129. So it's not going to be very much less than that when he comes up here. He's still himself putting everything he's got to come to the line and save his day. And he's still finding the effort to sprint, but these last few kilometres have been sensational by Indurain. There's the finishing line, and there's the clock on the left of our screen. It was over five minutes at the bottom, and it's going to be just around about two at the top, and he's grasping every second of it. Indurain knows he's under pressure this year, but they're not going to beat him without a great fight. What a ride by the champion. Two minutes and two seconds down. And after Indurain finished in second place, well, the rest of the riders really did have a bad time on the climb. The third place was taken by Pavel Tonkov. He was 4 minutes 11 seconds back. And not far behind him came Marco Pantani taking fourth place at 4 minutes 37 seconds. And Ivan Gotti was just behind him. 
Richie Vereng scored a few more points for the King of the Mountains. He got sixth, six minutes and five seconds back. Tony Rominger was just behind him. And then came the group led in by Laurent Jalabert at around about seven and a half minutes behind. Bjorni Rees couldn't even hang on to that group. He got a separate time of almost seven minutes and 40 seconds. And on a day when Miguel Indurain was forced to fight back, Pavel Tonkov took third place, but four minutes, 11 seconds behind. Marco Pantani and Ivan Gotti finished fourth and fifth, with Richard Vereng heading home Tony Rominger, but they were over six minutes back. Bjorn Aris finished 18th. He lost seven minutes and 37 seconds. Evgeny Berzin really did hit the wall big time. He was 17 minutes and 28 seconds back. Well, Alex Zula survived today and he'll be remembered as the man who really had a go. But by the time Sean Yates arrived, the heavens had opened. Yates finished 33 minutes behind in a torrential storm. Two minutes later, the main field came in. What a great athlete Miguel Indurain is. Again, he has showed his determination when pushed into a corner and another yellow jersey tonight is his.